Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about finding the best gaming laptop to bring while traveling. But let's back up a sec. My name is Khalil, and when I get really excited about something, I do a ton of research on it, and now I want to share that with you. Also, I'm not sponsored by anyone, so this is just my take. My goal was to find a laptop that was portable and minimal, but still powerful enough to play a game like Apex Legends. I wanted to stay somewhat minimal and avoid bringing anything other than a mouse, so this laptop needed to be able to do it all. When I started looking into this, it was impossible to avoid the name of the laptop we're talking about today, the Asus Zephyrus G14. So many other gaming laptops are like giant and heavy and feel like they were made to sit on a desk all day. Not this one. Okay, here's the version I got to try out. It's specced out with an NVIDIA 4050 RTX GPU, a Ryzen 7 7735HS CPU, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, a 512 gigabyte M2 SSD, all in a moonlight white case. The display is an IPS 1440p panel running at 165 hertz. That's actually insane. Like this thing has a higher pixel density and refresh rate than my desktop monitor at home. The laptop weighs 3.8 pounds and its stock charger weighs another 1.6 pounds, bringing the total carry weight up to 5.4 pounds. As a comparison, a 13 inch MacBook Pro uh, with its charger weighs about three and a half pounds. I should note, I'm a huge Apple fan and use MacBooks for just about everything, but sadly they just do not make the cut for gaming. There were a few other laptops to consider. I took a look at the Razer Blade 14, MSI Stealth, Lenovo Legion, etc. But the Asus Zephyrus G14 stands out because of its sleek 14 inch size, super powerful GPU CPU combo, and reasonable price tag. At the time of making this video, this model is available for $1100 US dollars at Best Buy. The upgraded version of this laptop with the NVIDIA 4060 RTX GPU is available for just $150 more at $1250. Okay, before we dive into some gameplay and benchmarks, I want to talk a little bit about temperature. When learning about gaming laptops, the topic of temperature comes up a lot, and I wanted to share with you guys what I've found. So, if you're an advanced user, this might already all be super basic to you, but a lot of this was new to me. It turns out that both the average and peak CPU and GPU temperatures matter quite a bit, and there are three main reasons. First off, when these parts get too hot, usually around 90 degrees Celsius or so, the laptop will actually start throttling their performance. It does so by delivering less power to these parts, which in turn generates less heat. This is necessary so that they don't overheat and break. But the downside of this is that gaming performance will take a hit. We'd observe this in our gameplay as things suddenly starting to feel choppy or laggy or kind of glitchy. Okay, the second main reason that temperature and heat can be a problem is that prolonged exposure to heat can actually speed up how quickly our laptop components degrade over time. This means the lifetime of our laptop is potentially shortened by these heat generating activities like gaming. Okay, the third reason heat can matter is if our laptop runs hot, it needs to pump its fans to max power to cool them down. This generates a lot of noise, so for folks who want a quiet gaming laptop, they want to be mindful of that. I personally don't mind since I use headphones while gaming, but that's something to keep in mind. Alright, let's jump into some gameplay. I'm not actually very good at this game, but I do like playing it. Here, we can see an average FPS of 113 and a 1% minimum of 13. I care the most about these two numbers. Average tells us what our laptop's components like the GPU and CPU are capable of, while 1% minimum tells us how consistently we can expect that output. Let's talk temperatures. All of these numbers will be in Celsius. For the CPU, we're seeing an average temperature of 92 degrees maxing out at 95 degrees, and for the GPU, we're seeing an average temperature of 82 degrees maxing out at 92 degrees. Now, on to some benchmarks. First, I ran 3 d Mark free demo from Steam. I like this one since it's free and pretty widely used, which makes it nice to compare various devices. I ran the benchmark on both the performance and balance power settings, but saw no difference in temperatures and only a 1% difference or so in scores. We got an overall score of 6,772. The CPU score was 6,543, while the GPU score was 6,815. Let's take a look at temperatures. For our CPU, we saw an average temperature of 85 degrees and a max temperature of 95.1 degrees. For our GPU, 
we saw an average temperature of 71 degrees and a max temperature of 90 degrees. I also ran the crystal disk mark test to benchmark our M2 SSD that comes slotted in the laptop. Here are the scores it achieved. Note that this SSD is upgradable and you'd likely see higher numbers here from a mainstream replacement from Samsung or Western Digital. However, unless you're doing a ton of disk heavy operations, like copying 4K video onto the laptop, you probably won't notice too much of a difference in practice. Okay, let's break down those results. First, I tried running everything in both the balanced and performance power plans, but didn't really notice a major difference from either. For frames per second, this is a pretty respectable result for a laptop of this size and price. Laptops that cost nearly twice as much as the G14 may run at higher FPS or at lower temperatures, but uh, for this size and price, this is pretty incredible. The gameplay generally felt smooth, even enough for ranked competitive play in a game like Apex. The 1% low dips were noticeable, but I wouldn't say they'd stop me from wanting to play. For a laptop this portable and affordable, I was impressed. Okay, so now let's talk about the cons of this laptop. First, and probably the biggest for me, is that you've got to lug around this giant proprietary power brick when you want a game. This thing is heavy and cumbersome and definitely makes the laptop feel less portable. I did recently learn about a smaller and more portable third-party charger from a company called Slim Q. It weighs just 14 ounces, which saves you about three quarters of a pound, but it also costs $120, which is pretty expensive. Okay, the second big con of this laptop for me is that it does run quite hot. You can feel it on the keyboard itself, but as we saw in our benchmarks and gameplay, our temperatures for both the CPU and GPU were hanging around 80 to 90 degrees Celsius. While this is technically acceptable, it was probably higher than I'd be comfortable with personally. Honestly, I think I would have preferred a slightly cooler system that maybe was in the high 70s degrees of Celsius, even if it meant running at a few lower FPS. It's worth mentioning that more advanced users may be able to achieve this cooler result while gaming by doing what's called undervolting the CPU and GPU. This is a strategy where you intentionally deliver less power to the CPU and GPU, tuning each to see how much performance you can get while running at a lower power. Every single manufactured CPU and GPU will be a little bit different. This is sometimes called the silicon lottery, but many people have success with this method. For my desktop at home, I tweaked around and undervolted both my CPU and GPU. I saw a temperature reduction of around 25%, bringing my gameplay temperature into the 60s for both my CPU and GPU. This was about a 25% reduction in temperature at only a 5% cost to FPS. But note that undervolting is an advanced technique and can void the warranty of your machine. Also, you might risk damaging your machine altogether, so I only recommend this if you're an advanced user who knows what they're doing. Overall, this is a pretty sweet laptop that's definitely capable of running games like Apex Legends. And it's something of a steal right now for $1,100 or for the upgraded version at $1,250. But I want to know what you think. Let me know what you think down below, drop a like if this was helpful, and as always, thank you.